G'day Day Legends, on today's vlog we've got some new gear to look at. Every photographer loves new gear and this filter right here is going to give us some special secret sauce in our night photography. So stick around and roll that intro. G'day Blay Legends, thank you for joining me for another Nightscape Photography Vlog during the day. The reason behind that is I don't want to spend too much time focusing on the foreground elements of tonight's image. I want it to become dark, I want to get this thing rip roaring out and photograph the night sky and add that secret spice that this is meant to give us. I'm pretty bloody excited to use this, I hope you guys are too. If you are, make sure to drop below and subscribe because hopefully this will add some secret spice into the recipe. Mamma mia! Position number one is in camera, ready to go in about an hour's time. The photographer's poem always ends as a sad story. You wait weeks and weeks for the perfect conditions to go out and photograph the sunrise, the sunset, to get those vivid colours you always dream of, and they don't come. You finally go out to take pictures of the night sky and you get a rip snorting, vivid sunset. It's always the way it goes, but you've got to keep patient and keep getting out there. So you're probably asking yourself, Matt, if there's a vivid sunset, mate, and you're loving it, why aren't you photographing it? Well, it gets back on to, I'm taking a blue hour image. I'm pretty limited for time, and I want to try and incorporate something a little bit different into my sort of workflow. One, I haven't got access to this private property, so I'm limited by the fence. That gave me an idea to capture a blue hour image to blend into my night sky, because when I go away, I haven't always got time to take 10, 12 images of the foreground, then the night sky, I blend them together, it takes me hours in post-production. So what I'm thinking is, with this workflow, I'm restricted by the fence, I might as well take a blue hour image, real low ISO, and blend it in the night sky. Now I know it's not the typical, traditional way, but I want to incorporate it into my workflow, because I can't always do the typical way of stacking images and getting that low noise at night. So that's what I'm going through and doing now. XF 16 to 55 on, shooting about 37 mil, because I want to get rid of these trees in the foreground, these beautiful gum trees, and just focus on this old farmer's hut, the old settler's hut here that used to be on a working station. I've got sort of the road coming in and just frame it with those gum trees around. So having to push in, I wouldn't be able to do that with the night sky. I haven't got a 1.4, 35 mil lens. So we're stuck with this one and a blue hour image. We're gonna wait around now for about an hour, hour and a half to get this image, just as the sun sort of dissipates and the night sky is coming out. Should be beautiful. Alright, the time is upon us to start photographing. Well, almost. We're about three or four minutes off, but I was sitting in the back of the van before thinking, why do we call it a blue hour image blended together with the night sky image? Because when blue hour first officially started, there was still so much light. I couldn't have, well, I could have photographed it. There would have been too much light to blend in with the night sky image. It would have looked unrealistic. So I talk about photo pills a lot on this channel, and there's for good reason behind that. If we go to photo pills right now, the top right has got sun. If we click on this, it's like a daily planner of what the sun and light is doing. So you can go through and see it's got the golden hour, moonset, daytime, sunrise, golden hour for sunrise. It's a great way to find how to plan to go out for your night sky, daylight, sunset images. But blue hour started at 2039. 
It is now 21.18. We're in the heart of summer here in Australia and it is bloody stonking hot. If I photo at the blue hour, as I said, it would have been unrealistic. Nautical Twilight started at 20.50. That's almost half an hour ago. It was still a little bit too bright. So from now on, on this channel, we're gonna go through and say an astronomical twilight blended together with a nighttime image. That astronomical twilight for a rule of thumb is the perfect time to start photographing if you wanna get one image and blend it in with the night sky for later on. So that is a good tip and one other reason why I think photo pills is a great way to go through and understand when to photograph throughout the day. But I wanna to touch on camera settings just quickly. I've settled on F4. It's the perfect balance between depth of field in the image and also getting the correct shutter speed. I don't want to be standing here for 60 seconds taking an image. It defeats the purpose of what we're trying to do. So F4, ISO I have settled on 640. Now for my shutter speed, this is the most important thing to understand. We're going to set it to automatic. We're only going to change our exposure compensation dial. So I'm going to start at zero. That is going to give me a little bit over three seconds, so not really what I want, but I can guarantee it'll be too bright. What I'm going to go through now and do is get zero, minus one, minus two, minus three, because I don't know exactly what I want to use. Probably the minus two, because we want a darker image with less noise to blend together with that night sky. So I'm going to go through now and catch those images in camera to see what we like to blend through later. Okay, the images are on the SD card and it's literally the perfect storm. Lightning is directly, it cannot be any more directly behind the image. So it might destroy the composition just a little bit for the purpose that we're trying to get out of it. It's amazing to witness and amazing to see. But I went through and got the zero, minus one, minus two, and minus three exposure compensation in camera. Now at the end of this vlog, I am gonna to explain to you how you can download all these images and the images from the filter that we're going to get that sugar and spice from for our night photography images. So make sure to hang around to the end and get all those images for 100% free so you can blend them together and see that filter for 100% and not YouTube compression because we are about to go off right now and take those images with that night photography filter. I'm pumped, let's get going. Okay, Dokely, we are about a half an hour on from where we just shot, so it's completely dark skies now. We're at tomorrow morning's location, which I want to photograph, but now it is time to use this sugar and spice, the Dream Glow filter from Case. It is my first time using it. Yes, I am super pumped, but basically what it's going to do is get the brighter stars inside of what we're photographing and give them a Dream Glow effect, where the, obviously the filter name comes from. We'll be using the HMY magnetic filter case, as we've already seen, so I can just pop it on and off as you've previously seen on this channel. Because what I want to go through and do is take eight images with it on, take it off without moving a composition because of this cord magnetic system, and shoot it without. Because what I am trying to do is my first time shooting it, I want to see if we lose any light because of this filter. Do we lose any sharpness? Do I actually like the filter? And I want to go through and see that. Does it add any color cast? Because filters always change things just a little bit. Yes, it's very, very see-through, but I want to check those fundamental parts because we may be out shooting one day with a foreground element. I don't want to shoot 10 images with this filter on, get home and think, whoa, that hut looks really weird because of that filter. Yes, it might look amazing because of the stars, we can take it off and catch that foreground element. Because it is my first time shooting, I want to go through my go-to settings. 6400 ISO, 13 second shutter speed because we are shooting the XF, 16mm 1.4, but we will be shooting at F2 because I want to get rid of some of that comma. Gonna go through and shoot eight images with and without, stack them together and see what I like about this filter and what I don't like about this filter. And after this, as always, I'm gonna to explain to you how you can go through and download all these images with, without the foreground element images for free yourself. So stick around. 
Alrighty, first impressions. I don't actually mind it. Two things that I really, really noticed. First thing is it gives a lot more dream glow effect than I first thought of. And that's just because I think we're in pure dark skies in Australia. I'm a little bit high altitude, 400 meters. We've had thunderstorms, means really clear, pure skies, giving it just that real dream glow effect, allowing this filter to really shine through. And secondly, there's definitely a time and a place for this filter. It does add quite a lot into the image and can be quite overpowering. But what I do think straight away is this would work and lean itself towards nightscape photography on the coastline, giving you that dreamy effect already from the waves rushing in and that real long exposure effect with the stars in the sky. That would look absolutely beautiful, I think, giving that dreamy effect from the foreground and obviously the stars itself. Now, I hope this is in focus and sharp enough for you guys when you download those images. There'll be a link below to click through onto my blog. You can read more about this filter setup and what I think of it. My first impressions, basically, obviously in a six months, nine months time, I'll let you guys know more and more what I think. But in that, you'll have a link to download these images. Basically, I've taken images straight up, so you've got pure, clean sky images, all the eight images, so you can practice stacking them, the stacked images, the foreground images, so you can go through and blend them together and see what you think with and without. So you can go through, download 100% free, and see what you guys think, but there's one thing that I'd love for you to do is get back to me and let me know what you do think of this filter in the comments below. I'm really interested to know what you think. Is it a waste of money? Is there a time and a place for this? That's where I sit on it. I've actually really enjoyed testing out this new filter. I'm actually in, in love with it. I think there's a great avenue to go back to a place I've already shot and really change the dynamics of the scene. So that is really cool. Make sure to drop below guys and subscribe. But the one thing that you can please do for me is get out there, keep creating, keep inspiring, and I'll definitely see you guys on the next one. Ciao. That wasn't even close.